Hello everybody. So I will try to guide you through the basics of uh, MQTT. And I will start with some words about the name MQTT. Um, it originates from uh, a product series from IBM uh, uh, many years ago. And uh, some documentation also talks about MQ telemetry transport and so on. And that there might be other abbreviations as well. But in the recent years, um, MQTT is no longer considered to be an acronym anymore, but uh, it's simply the name of the protocol. Uh, MQTT is a message-centric publish-subscribe protocol, and uh, by that uh, I mean that it's, uh, uh, the, the message is specified by MQTT, but not the content. Um, so it's very important that a system that will use MQTT, both publishers and subscribers, knows uh, what to listen for and what to publish. I will talk more about that later on. Uh, MQTT is an extremely lightweight protocol, and it's used in, for example, machine-to-machine -machine communication. Uh, in IoT applications, and uh, also in the la uh, last years, uh, has become very popular in uh, home automation systems. Uh, it runs over TCP/IP, um, uh, basically, and there are also versions of the specification which can be run on other uh, media as well. Uh, as I said, it's, it's a lightweight protocol, and it's designed for resource-constrained devices with limited uh, memory spaces and limited, uh, limited speed, and so on. So, so it's, it's uh, very suitable for, for small microprocessor systems and, uh, and so on. Uh, it was invented in 1999, so it, it has been around for some years. Um, initially developed for satellite communication in the oil and industry. Um, and the goal at that time was to collect data from many devices and then transport that data up to uh, different IT systems. Uh, there's a very small overhead. Uh, the minimum packet is only two bytes long. and uh, uh, everything, every every aspect has been made to, to to make it as lightweight as possible. Uh, there are the, the current specification is version 3.1.1, uh, and there is also uh, uh, another specification coming out. Uh, there is a second review uh, going on at the moment. I'm not sure where when it will be released, but uh, uh, but it's uh, it's on review currently. Uh, there is also a, a more slim version for uh, for uh, sensor networks, for example, the SIGB network, uh, mainly for home automation. And in 2014. Uh, Version 3.1.1 of MQTT was uh, was uh, taken over by the Oasis Consortium. Uh, and the Oasis now drives the development of the MQTT specification. Uh, MQTT uh, is a published subscribe uh, network, and uh, there are two different. Um, unit types specified by MQTT. There is the client, uh, which establishes uh, a connection to a server. And uh, a client can be either uh, a publishing client that publishes data to the network, or it, it can be a subscribing client. The same unit can be, uh, of course, the both uh, publishing and subscribing. 
And uh, in the middle, we have the broker. And it, it acts uh, as an intermediary between publishing clients and subscribing clients. And uh, all clients connect to the broker. And uh, publishing clients publishes data to the broker. And the subscribing client uh, uh, and the broker uh, sends uh, uh, the messages to the subscribing clients. And the broker processes all subscriptions and unsubscription requests from the clients. Um, as you can see in the picture here, uh, there is no direct connection between the publishing client and the subscribing client. So there is no way for a publishing client to know if there is anyone subscribing to its data. Um, as I said before, it's a lightweight protocol. There are only 14 different types of messages that is uh, defined in the MQTT specification. Among those, um, the most common ones is a, a connect request between uh, the client and the broker. There's a publish message from publishing clients, and there's a subscribe message for, from subscribing clients, and also some other uh, some other uh, messages needed for uh, for the network to run. Um, when a client publishes data, the data is identified by a uni unique topic string. And uh, here you see two examples. Uh, this is factory one, device A, temperature, and factory two, device C, operating hours. And it's always good to, to, uh, to divide the topic names into different parts, uh, as you see here. So, uh, for example, the factory one has its own parameters, and factory two has its own uh, uh, parameters. And uh, it, it can even even be good to, to add a version to the topic name to be able to scale uh, to scale the messages in the future. Uh, and the, the broker uses the topic string to distribute the messages to the subscribers. And the subscribing clients can also subscribe to uh, use wildcards when subscribing. Uh, so a subscribing client can subscribe to all parameters generated from a specific machine, for example. Uh, the payload of the data is not specified by MQTT, uh, so it can be it can be anything but but some some commonly commonly used uh, formats or JSON and comma separated files or or XML for example, but it's completely decided by uh, by the application what format to use for the encoding. And here you see in the picture the subscribing client will send a subscribe request to the broker. And uh, uh, in this case, the topic name is topic. And when a publishing client publishes data on that same topic, uh, the broker will receive that and then send it out to all subscribing clients. So there might be many subscribing clients subscribing to the same topic. Uh, here's uh, uh, an illustration of what, how it can look. Here we have a flow meter on the factory floor. Uh, and it will produce uh, the flow value to the broker. Here we have a subscribing unit uh, that will subscribe to the same topic. It's probably like a a monitoring terminal or something here. And uh, when the publishing client has something to publish, it will be sent to the cloud and the broker receives it and then send it out to all subscribing clients.
some words about real reliability and security. Uh, first, reliability. What functionality do we have to, to uh, make sure that the specific data value is reaches its, its target? So there is something called quality of service in MQTT, um, and it it will it will make sure that uh, that the data reaches the target. There are different different levels, uh, three different levels. I will talk more uh, in a little bit about that. There is a will message that is set up when connecting to the broker. The will message will be sent out like a normal topic from the broker if the broker uh, finds that, that that the client has disconnected in in any way. So there there, there will be an information that 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 the client has disconnected or the cable is cut or, or if it disgracefully disconnects in any way. There is a keep alive message, keep alive time uh, that uh, the broker uses to, to determine if a client is, is still alive or not. And uh, if there is no message from a client within the keep alive time, then this will message will be sent out. And uh, there is also a store session state, uh, which if it is enabled, will store, for example, all subscriptions from a subscribing client, and also uh, the state of a message transfer, uh, if a more advanced quality of service is used. Uh, I will talk more about that later as well. When we talk about security here, there is a username and a password uh, available when connecting, when a client is connecting to the broker. Um, but MQTT provides no ex uh, encryption functionality itself. Uh, so the options is to encrypt the payload itself and also to use TLS. Uh, which is uh, is uh, the encrypted connection on TCP/IP, and uh, actually there is if if TLS is not used, there is no it's it's not useful to use the username and password since it will be sent in clear text in the connect message. So some details about the quality of service. Uh, three levels. Of quality of service, it's specified when publishing the data to the network, and also when a subscribing client subscribes to uh, to different topics. And it's always between the, the client and the broker that we're talking. We're never talking about a direct connection between two clients. So this quality of service is, is always between between the client and the broker. So level zero, this will make sure that uh, the message is delivered to the best effort. There might be message losses, but uh, in some cases, for some applications, it doesn't really matter if all values are uh, reaches its target. For example, if you have a temperature sensor or something with a cyclic update, then it will be sent out. Uh, cyclically, and uh, there will always always be some messages that that will reach uh, its target. So this is QoS one. It's published in one direction, and there is no acknowledge to that message. Level one here, it makes sure that a message is delivered uh, at least once. We, we have a, it's guaranteed that the message will be delivered to the broker. However, there might be duplicates. So uh, the publishing client will try to deliver to the broker until it gets an acknowledge from the broker. And the highest level of quality of service is level two. And here 
it makes sure that a message uh, arrives exactly once to the target. And it's the least commonly used uh, quality of services level because it's relatively complex and it, of course, decreases the performance a little bit because there are many packages that need to be sent to make sure that, that it has arrived only once. Uh, some more words about the last will, keep alive, retain, and clean session. The last will and testament uh, is, as I said, uh, it's sent out if the broker noticed that a client has been gracefully disconnected, ungracefully, uh, ungracefully disconnected from uh, the client. Uh, and it's actually a standard topic that is used to send out uh, the last will and testament. So that, that might be some good uh, good options to use this last will and testament. For example, for status information, offline, online information uh, for the clients. And uh, the last will parameters are configured when connecting to the broker. To keep a live message, uh, it's sent, uh, it's, if a message of any kind has not uh, been sent within the keep live time, uh, then the broker considers the client to be lost and uh, the last will message will, will be sent out. There is a ping request message that, that will be sent out from the, from the client if there are no other messages. Uh, just to make sure, uh, just to let the broker know that uh, it's still alive. In the connect message, there is a retain bit. Uh, sorry, in, in the publish message, there's a re retain bit, and it tells the broker that uh, that the pub published data shall be kept in the broker. So if if a new uh, newly connected subscriber connects to the broker and it subscribes to this topic, the topic will value will be sent out instantly to that subscribing client. Uh, the retain bit can be set uh, is, is set on every every publishing message so it doesn't really need to be the latest value that that's saved in the broker but most often it, it is, I think. And then we have the clean session. It's also a bit when, when connecting to, to the broker. Uh, if it's false, then the broker will save information about subscriptions and uh, also undeliver messages. Uh, if, if, if the client is, is disconnected. Uh, and that will, of course, save some bandwidth uh, and save, save some resources. And if it's true, nothing is saved. Is saved so all subscriptions and uh, and everything has to be sent again if if the client is reconnected. The packet structure is pretty simple. It's a fixed header with two bytes. Uh, it has uh, in the first byte, the package type. Uh, second, uh, second nibble, uh, it's the, the, uh, some flags depending on what package type it is, and then there is uh, the remaining length of uh, of the message. Some messages also have a, a, a variable header and a payload, but it's uh, it's de it depends on which what kind of message it is. The connect packet contains a client ID, which is a unique ID for uh, for every client. Um, there's the clean session bit we talked about before. Here's the username and password that will be used when connecting to the broker. <clears throat> and here we have then we have the, uh, the I don't know if you can see my pointer. You can. Okay, good. 
So uh, the last wheel parameters uh, will also be sent here. And then we have the keep alive time. So here the publishing client connects to the broker and here the subscribing client connects to the broker. Then we have the subscribe packet and it contains a packet ID. Uh, it contains the quality of service for topic one. And then there can be several, several topics in the same subscription packet. So if we look at the flowchart again, uh, here we have the subscribe packet and there will be an acknowledge from the broker that it accepts uh, the subscription. Then the publishing client will publish data on the same topic. And the publishing packet has a packet ID. It has a, the topic name, quality of services level. Uh, here's the retain flag if the broker should, should uh, keep the value. That's the payload, the actual value, and it can be in clear text like here, or it can be coded in any way. There is also a duplicate flag, which is used uh, when you when having uh, when using quality of services level one and two uh, to indicate that it's a duplicate message. So in the flowchart, we see that the publishing client will publish on this topic temperature one and some data and the broker will send out the same topic to all subscribing clients and in this case there were two different different temperature values and a quick look at uh, a use case that can be uh, MQTT can typically be used in in a, in a factory to push non-time critical data from the factory floor to the data fog or cloud, and uh, it it collects uh, diagnosis diagnostics from the network assets uh, that can be analyzed in different ways and uh, also predict maintenance and so on to save money. Uh, it can store uh, quality associated data for different procedures in production, for example, if the welding parameters uh, about the welding spot, uh, filling a bottle, tightening a screw, etc. And uh, all this data will be used with analytic tools, tools later on in the cloud or anywhere else or be sent out to, 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 uh, to other, other Unix units uh, uh, connected to the cloud. And here we see the factory floor with uh, MQTT connected clients. The broker in this case is in the cloud and uh, doesn't really have to be MQTT all the way. Most often it's not. So uh, this monitoring device out here is is using a different API to to one of the cloud services. Okay, that's all information I have uh, here on the last slide. Is some there are some good links if you want to read more about MQTT and uh, and uh, get more details about it. Especially, I can mention this MQTT Essentials, which is a very good uh, beginner's guide, or uh, <clears throat> it's a very good guide to learn MQTT.